Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. We're starting our summer series today called Stories of Jesus. Stories of Jesus. Throughout the entire summer, June, July, and August, we are going to look at the different miracles and things that Jesus performed in his ministry. Um, It's something that, uh, there's a verse in the Bible that kind of stumped me ever since I read it, and it's this in John 21, 25. It says, and there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written down one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Like, dang, that's a lot of books. How many things did he do? And like, I thought to myself, could I even fill up one side of a business card with the things that I've done in ministry, let alone Jesus could fill the world with books? So the works that he did, the miracles that he performed were innumerable. We could not count them all. But we will go through Scripture throughout the summer and look at the miracles that Jesus performed. We're going to do an existential and an exegesis study of it. I kind of, uh, I got a lot of feedback from the Armor of God series that people really liked the deep dive into the study. And so we're going to do that throughout the summer, and then I'll give you a little example of what that's going to look like today for the rest of the summer. Is that all right? So we're looking at healings of Jesus today. We're going to look at blind Bartimaeus. And when we're studying out Scripture and we're studying out the stories of Jesus, it's important that we pay close attention to the details, that we look at the details, and that when we're praying and talking to God, that we are detailed ourselves, okay? So we want to go through the Scriptures. We want to be careful to analyze and digest everything that's in the passage. Luke 5.15 tells us this, however, the report went around concerning Jesus all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. What did they come for? They came to hear and be healed. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So hearing the Word of God precedes healing. Hearing precedes healing. We need to hear the Word of God, then one can be healed. We need to be careful to pay attention to these details. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. A lot of times in Scripture, Jesus would turn to somebody and say, your faith has made you whole. How do they get that faith? From hearing the Word of God. My hope throughout this summer is as we hear stories of faith in Jesus Christ, that faith would rise in our hearts and that we would attempt to do things that we've never attempted to do before in our spiritual lives. Okay? It's important for us to understand that Jesus went to towns and villages teaching, preaching, then healing. Teach, preach, then heal. Why? Because they had to hear in order to gain faith. They must hear to gain faith. Okay? Faith comes by hearing. Once you have received healing in your body, maybe you've experienced this before, you received a healing in your body, you know you were healed, but then all of a sudden, there's like this counterattack of the enemy to steal the very thing that you just got. Or there's doubt that comes into your mind. I don't know if I was really healed. Was I really healed? Or was that just like a 24-hour bug kind of thing that worked its way out? Come on. Inevitably, there's this attack that will either come back onto your body or come to your mind that what God did wasn't real or wasn't true. So I want to go through the passage. I want to go through Scripture. I want to study this out. I want to look at the story of blind Bartimaeus and see if there's something in there that we can apply to our lives today. Mark 1046, I'm going to read the whole story, then I'm going to go back and break it apart. Now they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. 
And when he heard, when he what? When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out saying, Jesus, son of David, have what? Mercy on me. Then many warned him, be quiet, shut up. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man saying, be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. It's so funny how that just switched up, right? Like, dude, shut up. Oh, Jesus, hey, Jesus called, you got an opportunity, come on. <laughs> Jesus is calling you and throwing aside his garment, he arose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered him and said, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabone, that I might receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well, and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Pretty simple story, right? But we need to dive into this. We need to dissect it. We need to look at it in the Greek, and we need to pull out terminologies and, and history to understand what's happening here. So let's go back to Mark ten forty six. Now they came to Jericho. As they went out of Jericho with the disciples in a great multitude, Blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. Now, let's think about this for a second. Blind Bartimaeus sat by the roadside begging. He's one of the few people healed in the Gospels that were given his name. What's the name of the one with the issue of blood? The one with the issue of blood. What's the name of the guy by the pool of Bethesda? The lame man laying by the pool of Bethesda. We don't know their name, but we know Bartimaeus' name. We know that he's not just Bartimaeus, but he's blind Bartimaeus. He's got a tag name. He's got a street name. Blind Bartimaeus, and he's the son of Timaeus. This tells us that he's well known in this area, right? There's a guy who everybody on 211, all the stores hire him to stand outside and dance with a sign. And he does like this very weird dance. I mean, you know this, like if you've ever driven down 211 and seen this guy, he's there all the time, especially when stores are going out of business. He's twirling this sign, like out of business sign or whatever, maybe you've seen him. I don't know his name. But he's a popular guy. Like I've seen him a lot. Blind Bartimaeus, well known. He stood out in society because of his begging and the amount of people that passed him. And because of this, he would be a notable healing or a noticeable miracle if this guy who everybody saw every, every day who was blind can now see. It's going to be noticeable. It's going to change things. He's going to be a witness. Mark 10, 47. And when Bartimaeus heard, when he Heard. How does faith come? By hearing. He heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to cry out saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So he must have heard that Jesus was a healer. He must have heard that. He must have heard that there's a man named Jesus going about, about towns and villages healing all all who are sick and oppressed of the devil, he's no respecter of person, that he will touch you, he will heal you. He's heard stories, he's heard rumors, and now this guy who is named Jesus is in my city. He heard it, and he must have heard that healing comes by the mercy of God. He's crying out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. If he had never heard that Jesus was a healer, he wouldn't have asked for healing. Right? If he heard that Jesus was a rich man, what would he have done? Jesus, give me money. Yes? But he must have heard that he was a healer. What he heard, he acted on. He acted on what he heard. If you're taking notes, write this down. Three things I want you to know. What you hear determines what you ask for. If he heard he was a money man, he would have asked for money. If he knew that he owned a lot of houses and put people up in houses, he would say, hey, give me a house. What he heard 
Determine what he asked for. Jesus is a healer. I want me some healing. What you hear determines what you believe for. If he's a healer, I believe he can heal me. What you hear determines what you're expecting. What you hear determines what you're expecting. Now, I, I'm just going to ask a question. This is to no shame. But what, you, what were you expecting from church today? What were you expecting from God today? What were you expecting coming into church? I mean, you put your clothes on, hopefully you took a shower in order to come to church today. Expecting what? To be entertained? To be impressed? To be inspired? To do a duty so that you feel like you accomplished something? Or did you ex expect the presence of a living God? Did you expect to encounter a living God today that could forever change your life? Because if you've never heard that he can do that, you'll never expect it. You see, because our expectation is God's invitation to do a work in our lives. And what I want you to notice is that this guy is not crying out in desperation. He's crying out in faith. He's not crying out in desperation. He's calling out to the healer to meet his need. And for the first time in a long time, he wasn't begging for something from someone. He was extending faith with a loud shout. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. If you've ever asked God for something, you probably have begged. You've probably gone to begging. I'm going to be honest with you. Can I be transparent today? Don't judge me. But I feel a little, a little bit like a hypocrite preaching today, preaching this sermon today. I do. A little bit like a hypocrite. Not a full hypocrite. Partial. Right? Like eight sixteenths. <laughs> Why? Because Friday morning I woke up and I had vertigo. It's when your head's spinning, like your equilibrium's off. You're all dizzy and everything, right? I've been laying on the couch the last two days. Last two days, I've been flat on the couch, couldn't move. Could barely even get up to go to the bathroom. I literally was thinking about urinating in a jar just so I didn't have to get up. It was that bad. If you've ever had vertigo, you, it's just wild. It just messes you up. But then I'm here preaching about healing. And there was a part of me yesterday where I was begging. Oh, God, please, please, please. I think I'm going to throw up. God, hell, have mercy. <laughs> please. But this wasn't begging. He wasn't begging. He was crying aloud, a voice above the others. See me. I can't see you, but do you see me? I can't feel you, but can you feel me? You know what's wild when we talk about people with disabilities, especially someone who's blind, is that their other senses are heightened. And what would be the number one sense that would be heightened for a blind person? Hearing. The way faith comes. The way faith comes. His hearing would be heightened. His antennas for faith heightened. For the first time in a long time, he's not begging. He's claiming. He's requesting by faith. Here's what I want you to understand today is that your heart is capable of believing what your mind cannot figure out. Your heart is capable of believing what your mind cannot figure out. That's what faith is. Faith is the ability to walk, act, and operate in something that makes no sense. Can't figure this out. But I feel that God is going to do something. So he shouts with a loud voice, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The term, the statement son of David is a direct reference to Jesus being the Messiah. Now the term Messiah to Jews means a little bit more than it does to us. And here's what the word Messiah means to the Jews. God's anointed one who carries the anointing and power of God. That's what Messiah means. So when he's saying son of David, the, one, the Messiah who's come from the house of David, he's saying you are God. 
You are God's anointed one with the anointing and power of God, and you can heal me. Have mercy on me. I heard you're a healer. I heard that you're a good man. Be good to me. If you study scripture, there's a story of the Canaanite woman in Matthew 15, 22, and she cries out, son of David. It says, it said, behold, a woman of Canaan came from the region and cried out saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon possessed. Have mercy on me. She's crying out to the Messiah, the one who's all powerful, the anointed one in his anointing. But I want to pause for a second and tell you this, like, don't confuse godly compassion with human sympathy. They're not the same thing. They're not the same thing. Seeing a need and you feeling bad for a person and meeting the need is not the same thing as godly divine compassion. The Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion multiple times in the Bible. Moved by who? Moved by the Holy Spirit into compassion and to do something because of that. When we're just moved by emotion, there really isn't any guarantee that God's actually in operation in it. I just want to point that out, all right? But I do want to say this, is that the same compassion that God had in the scripture, he operates and walks in today on our behalf. If the Bible says it, we believe it, that settles it. If it happened in the Bible, it's for us today. Amen? Amen. Let's look at verse 48. It goes on to say this. Then many warned him, be quiet. Shh, don't be too loud. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. I want to point this out to you today, that there are some people that will try to silence your faith. There are some people who will try to silence your faith. This man was blind, but he saw something others couldn't see. There will always be those who think that your faith is unreasonable and unrealistic. Why would you believe God, brother? Are you crazy? Why are you dreaming like that? What's wrong with you? You're just a dreamer. Your head's in the clouds. Haters, man. Haters going to hate. And haters are going to be stuck with the miserable life they got. The reason why people hate on your dreams and hate on your faith is because they're miserable with their life. And they've lived life too afraid. They've lived life too cautiously, too scared. And they're envious of someone who would cry out for something that they want. There are always those who are going to try to silence your faith. Cry louder. And now, the word cry is kind of hard. He wasn't crying, he was shouting. He was getting the attention of the king, of kings. Raise the voice of your faith above the noise of those who would silence you. Raise your voice of faith above the noise in your head that would try to muzzle your faith. Because what's going to happen to your head when you try to step out in faith? What are you thinking? You're not good enough. You don't even read your Bible. Why should God heal you? you, you don't even, you're not even a good person. Why, why would God do this? These voices come. These things happen. I'm going to tell you God's honest story. About 10 years ago, a lady came up to me at the end of service, and she said, can you lay hands on me? Can you pray for me? I said, well, what, I'm pre- what am I praying for? She said, the doctors tell me I got emphysema. I said, you got emphysema? She said, the doctor said I got emphysema, but I ain't believing that. I ain't got no emphysema. And I'm like, yeah, you do. (laughs) Like, I know she's been smoking cigarettes for like 40 years. She still smells like them right now. She probably had a half a pack this morning. Come on, hey, I'm being for real, right? So I'm standing there, I'm like, God ain't going to heal you. You're undoing everything that he's doing. This is my head, my judgmental self. We all have done it. We all have done it. Someone tried to step out in faith and we judge them. Yeah, you got diabetes. You eat Twinkies every day. We do it, don't we? We always want to disqualify the mercy of God. 
Jesus, son of David, have mercy. Do you know what mercy is? Mercy is different than grace. Grace is unearned favor. Getting what you don't deserve. That's grace. You know what mercy is? Not getting what you do deserve. Not getting the punishment that you do deserve. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then I lay hands on this lady and I give her the normal prayer. Father, I thank you that she's healed from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. I speak to this emphysema to leave her body right now in the name of Jesus. No lasting effects. In Jesus' name, amen. And I walk back and I'm like, that lady came back the next week. She said, Pastor Mike, I got a clean bill of health. No emphysema, nothing wrong with my body. I had no faith at all for her. I had no faith at all. Listen, you ain't going to hear nobody preach like this. You ain't going to hear be this honest. I had no faith for her. Her faith in her God, in the healer, as she cried out, made her whole. Wild. Wild. Blows my mind. Right? Blows my mind. But this is what happens, man. Other people's voices, other people's disqualifications, or even your own. I deserve what's happening to me. Because this, yeah, that's why you need to call for mercy. Cry out for mercy. Not getting what you do deserve. Verse 49. So Jesus stood still. I love that. A cry of faith stopped him in his tracks. A cry of faith stopped Jesus in his tracks. My man was just walking by, and he heard the voice of faith, and he stopped. Someone, someone, someone called me. How saith thou who calleth thee? Everybody, no, 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 no. Somebody called in faith. Somebody called in faith. It's the same thing that the one with the issue of blood touched his garment. He said, who touched me? His servant said, how sayest thou who toucheth thee? Everybody's touching you. No, 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 no. I felt virtue lead me. I felt faith be drawn from me. <laughs> Jesus stood still. He said, bring the blind man to me. Be of good cheer. Rise. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. And I, I love that part. And that, that means nothing to you yet. That means nothing to you yet that he threw his garment off. That doesn't mean anything yet. We're going to get there in a second. But Jesus traveling on his way. Traveling on his way. He hears faith call his name. And it stopped him where he was. A great man of faith named Smith Wigglesworth once said, It seems as though God will pass over a million people to get to that one person standing in faith. Faith is one thing that he will not pass by on. He will stop for faith every time. He didn't stop for a beggar. He stopped for faith. There's a difference. There's a difference. Throwing his garment aside, he rose and came to Jesus. And this is just wild, right? Because he's blind. It doesn't say that anybody escorted him. It doesn't say that anybody grabbed his hand. It doesn't say that they gave him a cane. He says, he stood and he walks to Jesus. He's still blind. Doesn't the Bible say that we are to walk by faith and not by sight? That it's possible to still get up in a blinded state with the heightened senses of your ears of faith so in tune that you know exactly where God is and how to get to him. But he threw off his cloak. That's the part I want to get to. In the time of Jesus, of the time of Jesus' ministry, a beggar was issued a cloak from the government that was essentially a license for them to beg and to collect alms from people. It's a lot like 
the parking pass that you can get to park in a wheelchair accessible area. We call it parking in a handicapped spot. You got to have that wheelchair ticket to be on your windshield or else you can't park. You're going to get a ticket, you're going to get towed, or you're going to get egged, or you're going to get your car keyed, whatever, right? A lot like that. A government-issued identification that says you have a license to beg. If he didn't have that license, he'd be run off the streets. But it became part of his identity, licensed beggar. That's why he's blind Bartimaeus. We never went back and rewrote the scripture and said healed Bartimaeus. We never went back and rewrote scripture and said Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, led 10,000 people to Christ. No. We still identify him as the cloaked beggar, blind Bartimaeus, part of his identity. He was disabled. He could not perform other tasks in order to provide for himself. There was no other use for him in society but to beg. So what did he do? Casting off his license. Casting off the cloak. Bartimaeus cast off his garment, and in doing so, he was casting off his trust in anyone else to provide for him and place his trust in the healing of Jesus Christ. You see, to that point, he was provided for by the people and covered by the state. He said, no, from this day forward, Jehovah Jireh will be my provider. Jesus Christ will be my source. He wasn't just casting off a jacket or a blanket. He was walking away from his right to beg. I'm going to say something that's not going to be very, very popular with everybody. He came off disability before he was healed. No, no, Jesus, heal me. Then, if all is good, after like a week or so, then I'll like give my blanket to somebody else. I don't want this to go to waste. I'll give my handicap sticker to somebody else. I don't want this to go to waste. I'm going to keep using it. Close parking? Come on. Hey, I ain't hating on nobody, but we're talking about faith. We're talking about faith. Because you can have faith in the wrong things and get negative results. I told you I was I told you it was gonna be popular. I told you. Had a dude one time come up to me, wanted healing. Said, I need you to pray for me, man. I'm in so much pain. Would you just pray that my pain goes away? And I said, Well, tell me a little bit about the story. He said, No, I got injured on the job, I'm disabled, and and, and this happened. I was like, Oh man, let's pray for a total recovery, man. Top of your head. Hey, no! Don't do that. Then I got to go back to my job. Just make the pain go away. Bro wanted a spiritual Vicodin. He wants spiritual oxy from me. Hey, listen, man, I don't deal that kind of stuff. Know what I'm saying? Come on. Come on. I want to be healed, but I don't want to lose my benefits of being a beggar. Then do you have faith? Listen, I'm not judging. I'm just asking questions from the study. We're studying this together. He cast off the cloak first. He stood and he approached Jesus. There's still no guarantee that he's going to get what he's asking for. There's still no guarantee. Blind Bartimaeus gets up and he makes his way to Jesus because faith will not let you do what's convenient. Faith will not let you do what's convenient. When you are hungry to receive from God, you don't just look for the convenient. You're looking for the healer. You're looking for the Messiah. 
Now, Jesus had to have known what this guy was coming up to him for. He either had glasses on, or he had scales over his eyes, or he was a burn victim. We don't really know the story. What we can put together is that he once could see, but he now can't. So an accident happened. Something happened. A sickness happened. Maybe it was like a citywide known thing. Maybe there was a fire and he was in there and part of his face got burned and he couldn't see. And so now, this is why we know it's blind Bartimaeus, burn victim. Blind Bartimaeus had a disease. Blind Bartimaeus fell into acid. I don't know. But he gets up and he goes to Jesus and Jesus says to him, what do you want from me? Duh. Why does Jesus ask him this? And I'm just wondering today, are you bold enough to ask God for the things that you actually want? Or do we try him out? I'm asking for something little, and if he does that, then uh, maybe I'll believe. Are we bold enough to actually cry out in faith for the fullness of what we want from God? Or is doubt and disappointment and mistrust silencing our faith? Are you bold enough to ask? Or are the shouts of disqualification ringing in your ears? But Jesus says, and what do you want from me? And blind Bartimaeus responds like this, and I want to read it out of four different translations. He says, I want to see, in one translation. In another, I want to receive my sight. But in two other translations, says, I want to see again. I want to have my sight back. Now, I was going to tell you this. We need to be specific in faith. What are you actually believing? God, just give me a car. Do you want it to be running? Right? Come on. No, I want a running car. Name the year. Make, model, color. How many miles it got on it? If not, I promise you, not enough faith. There's not enough faith. You're not being specific. You're not being specific. Go after it. What's stopping us? This man is one who once saw but lost his vision. He knew what it was like to once have vision and then lost it. I think that there are some here today or watching online that although you can physically see, you have lost some life vision. You've lost some dreams. You've stopped chasing your dreams. You stop pushing ahead in life. You're just seated, begging for tomorrow to be a little bit better than yesterday. You just stopped. This is how life is. The post-COVID blues. We're in a recession. My stocks aren't worth nothing. My house is worth a lot, but can't sell because can't go anywhere. Come on. That, like this stuff hasn't crossed your mind. You're never going to be in faith sitting in neuroticism. Neuroticism is given to negative emotion. You're never going to be in faith and negative emotion at the same time. Faith stands up. Faith stands up. It casts off the thing that was keeping it down. It casts off the provision of anything else. I think there's some of us who once had dreams, but COVID just kind of squashed it. You had a plan for your life, but now you sit blinded by fear, doubt, and mistrust. Mark 10, 52 says this, Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And all the way until this moment, he's still blind. He cried out 
blind. He stood up blind. He approached Jesus blind. He made his request known before God blind. Still blind. See, because that's what faith is. Faith is doing it even before the manifestation happens. This is why I'm only half of a hypocrite today. Eight sixteenths. Because although physically this morning when I woke up, my head was spinning, I couldn't walk straight, so I'm sitting down today, and I'm not down there because I didn't want to fall off in case. I'm a preaching faith. I'm a preaching faith. I'm a preaching word of the Lord, even when my body is my body is screaming at me, go lay down. My body is my body is trying to override me and say there's something wrong in your head, your equilibrium's off. Go lay down. My spirit says there's a word that needs to be heard because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So watch this. Jesus says, your faith has made you whole. Immediately, he receives his sight and goes back begging. Isn't that crazy? Goes right back begging. No? He receives his sight, puts the cloak back on. Receives his sight, gives up on life. No. He received his sight and followed Jesus. Once healed, he continued in the way of the Lord. I just wonder, don't shout out, don't shout out because some, some people just make fools of themselves. I just wonder if we actually got what we asked from God, if it would increase our relationship with him or just be like, oh, thanks. Would you actually read your Bible more? If you got what you asked from God, would you actually pray more? No, I said, I said don't shout out, because that's not actually true, because we've received stuff from God, and it didn't really change anything. It didn't really change anything. If, 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 if it did all the time, if it always did, we would have came in here on a Sunday morning expecting a move of God. Expectation would change. Come on, I'm just, hey, I'm, just, I'm just studying things out, pointing things out. I don't know. I don't know. It did here. And what I'm saying is this. His healing had a purpose. The blindness didn't have a purpose. The healing had a purpose. We're still talking about it today. There are people still being set free and delivered by a guy named Bartimaeus son of Timaeus, today. He did not just get his healing and go back to welfare. He got his healing and became a minister of the gospel. How many people were led to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ because the man who once begged is now giving freely the gospel? Dude, this sermon's this is deep. Gotta go back and listen to this again. Go back and listen. Let this faith rise up in you. He didn't just go back to the way it was. He had a new life. He had a new life. He had a new way. The Bible says this. Placing our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Faith comes by hearing, but it's nourished by keeping our eyes on Jesus. See, where we get caught up is placing our eyes on Google. We go Google what we're feeling. Dizziness in my head. Can't sit up straight. Can't walk straight. What do I got? Oh my God, I got a brain tumor. <laughs> it's allergies and I got a little fluid in the left ear. We're going to take care of that. If faith comes by hearing, so does doubt. 
Faith comes by hearing, so that's unbelief. And unbelief, doubt, will be the enemy of your faith. Not fear. Because I was a little concerned about preaching today. I'm not going to lie to you. But faith says, faith has to shout louder. Faith has to shout louder. Faith has to get up out of bed, go do what you're called to do, sit up there with a smile on your face, pretend everything's all right, and preach the Bible. I will promise you, I will say what Paul said. I do not consider myself to have arrived. I haven't figured it all out. There are people that I have prayed for and have seen miracles happen. There are people that I have prayed for and have seen them die. I've seen it both. But these are the stories of Jesus. And we need to look into this and say, where does my story align with this story? What about blind Bartimaeus' story applies and aligns with my story? Where am I at with this? Would I cast off my cloak of provision and approach Jesus? Would I do that? Would I follow him after I receive my healing or would I go back to my family? Where am I at in this? Where are you at in this? How does it settle with you? Does it aggravate you? Does it confuse you? Throughout the summer, we're going to look at these stories of Jesus to come to this one place. That if we do not have our eyes on Jesus, he cannot be the author and finisher of our faith. And I'm going to ask you today, if you've never placed your eyes on Jesus, if you've never put your faith in him, I would invite you to do that today. That means that we confess him as Lord and Savior. We invite him into our lives. That we become a Christian. We become a believer in Christ. A follower of his way. Of the truth. Of the light. If that's you in here today or you're watching online and you've never had an opportunity to make Jesus Christ your Lord, we'd love to pray this prayer collectively with you today. And it goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to familychurchny.com or email us at team at familychurchny.com to get started today.